Hope everyone's doing well. So this video is just going to be a overview of the past couple of days. So a few things to comment. Looking at Friday, and it's pretty early. I apologize. My, I'm still uh, pretty tired, so it's kind of hard to uh, talk a lot right now, but I'm going to do my best. Um, looking at the day, one of the interesting things about this day is you only touched the moving average really well. You really only had one close below the moving average. So I look at this day and kind of think of the bare minimum possible that the bear that the bulls that the bears could do. You know, 99% of days touch the moving average, which clearly we did here, here, and here. But the odd thing about today is we only had one close below the moving average. And if you go back, look at any day, I mean, I mean, well over 90% of the time. You typically get at least th you know two. I would say three closes below the moving average, and this was the only close. So that is an extremely strong day. And just to take that a little further, go here. Uh, I'm having an issue with that BC I don't know why, but if I go to the ES and look at the five minute of yesterday. Well, really, that would be. Oh, I got to go back here. I'm going to say that. Go to the five minute of Friday morning. We had the economic report, the unemployment report. Whenever you get a bar like this, closing well over just all these bars, when the bar is this big, you're going to have a second leg. This is profit taking. So it's by the close, stop down here or down here. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'd probably, you could buy, put a stop down here and you could bet on at least a measure move up and you could do that. You could say, you know, here's my actual risk. So if I bought here, here's one, you know, that's one times my actual, I could do two times my actual. So from here to here, twice up, which is here, but it's by the close bar, probably going up at least a little bit higher. This is a warning though. That it might go, you know, soon go sideways. So probably buyers below. We retested here, but no real decent stop entry. Tight trading range, bull breakout, follow through, probably at least second leg up, three pushes, one, two, three, or you can say, you know, one, two, and three. Tight channel, first first down should fail. We tested the moving average. It's a 50% pullback from here to here. And then, you know, when you have a tight channel, you expect a retest. So and let me just go ahead and go back to the E-mini. And let me do always in. But either way, which we were talking about over here, this is the same as the, the big bar. Tight channel up, basically 50% pullback, testing the moving average. Usually you expect a retest. When the channel is this tight, you often have to have another major trend reversal and which we had a measuring gap, failed to get below the moving average and turned up. This is deceivingly strong. And I say that because of what I said earlier, we didn't touch, we did not get below the moving average. So whenever you start to, whenever you're rallying above the moving average the whole time, you know, kind of, I was watching, I was looking at crude oil and I thought I was looking at a 200, I thought I was looking at a five minute chart, but I was looking at a 240 minute chart. This is the same thing here. We get a breakout below all these bars, probably going at least a little bit lower. And we just, we cannot get above the moving average. And you have to wonder when we try here, 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 and we keep failing, we'll get another breakout. So it's, it's deceivingly strong. Back to the five minute. So let me just do always in real quick. And I'll talk about a few things for always in probably always in long above the bar. So if I, I Personally, I would not buy above it, too big of a tail. But if I did, stop below, no reason to get out. You can get out here, 80% chance that most days have at least a minor reversal. So, and 
This does not look like it's above average price action, so probably we'll have to test down to the lows. So you can get out of here, you can get out above the high one. Uh, stop down here. Looks like a bull leg in the trading range. Probably will get a deep pullback. Uh, bears don't go short. They can, I would not. Three consecutive bear bars, but again, at the moving average, not closing below it. Probably still always in long. And you have to think, you know, this is really what we're looking at. This rally is, this is a spike. So maybe, you know, ultimately, the bulls want this. Some sort of leg one, pullback leg two, maybe, and maybe even something like that. So anyways, bulls, tight channel, first first slip may fail. They can buy, they can buy here, or they could wait for just consecutive bull bars here or here. Stop down here. So you can argue it's a wedge, one, pull back two, pull back three, but very tight channel first, so probably gonna fail and get a measure move up. So always in long, no reason to get out here, leave a gap, uh, very tight trading range. You know, do you get out here? You can, but if you do, you gotta get long somewhere in here. Certainly by these bars, three or four consecutive bull bars, trying to form a small pullback bull trend. So you may get you know, something like this. So you need to get long again, stop down here or here. And then we route up for the rest of the day. Tight channel, no reason to get out here. And you know, just kept trending up. This is one of those grinding small pullback bull trends where it just it just keeps grinding up and it always looks like it's gonna reverse, but it never does. And this is pretty comparable to uh, July the 30th. Let's see if I can go back to it e fairly easily. Yeah, there we go. So, hmm. It's a lot. One moment. Okay, I was wrong. It was July the 3rd. That is why it looks so different yeah so notice this day here we had a day where we did not touch the moving average for the whole day and we had a buy climax in the prior day so buy climax didn't touch the moving average just extremely climactic and yeah so and i think we may have had a measure move well if you connect it from this low to here you get it, it basically it's a measure move up Either way, when you get that that much of a buy climax, you just you you have a much higher risk of a gap down. So, yeah, I just want to point that out that this does not happen. You know, one maybe once a year, maybe less than that. I don't know, but it's very 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 rare to have a day that does not touch the moving average. Never went always in short any today. So, you know, when you think about it, one of the problems the bears face with trying to short here and go for a swing is even if you get below the low of the day, it's probably going to be a trading range. So the bears know the bulls are waiting to buy down here. And the bulls, they're thinking, okay, it's at least a trading range. So if I can buy somewhere in this portion, put a stop down here, we'll probably retest up here and maybe we will get, which is what we did get, some sort of double top measure move up and a breakout of a neckline. So on one hand, I forgot to mention that. We have a double bottom and we have a double top. The bears wanted a double top and a measure move down and they failed. You can see here they failed. So when they got the follow through, the odds were getting higher that we were gonna have a measure move up and a breakout of a double top, which is a breakout of a trading range. All trading ranges are double tops and double bottoms. On the prior day, this was a very interesting day with this big bar. And I know it can seem shocking that we reversed the entire, you know, huge breakout, huge follow through, and we just reversed it really quick. But you gotta understand the context. Number one, 
Whenever you get a strong breakout, 50% of the time, it could be a trap. And you have to look to the left. You know, we've been sideways for this many bars. From here, all the way to here, trading range. So trading ranges often have breakouts that fail. And when you get a violent breakout like this, a violent follow through bar, you just have to be wondering, is it a second leg trap? Leg one, so here's the first leg pullback, second leg, you know, and you may have an even bigger second leg trap. Ultimately, if you're aware of higher time frames, you had a couple things going on. Let me get back to it. You had trading range, which I'm gonna have to do. It'll be easier if I do a 15 minute chart. So leg one, pullback, you know, leg two, you had a double top air flag, breakout and really you can see the breakout stopped here with the measure move you also had this though and I'll talk more about this in a little bit if you take the start of the trend and the gap takes you all the way down to the lows you don't need to know that though so let me just do always then So, from the start of the day, big bull bar. Uh, it's outside up, middle of a trading range. Bulls will, if bulls buy above it, it's not a great buy. It's the middle of a tight trading range. If bulls do buy above it, stop down here. A 80% chance it's going to fail because only 20% of the time, bar one's the lower high of the day. Bulls will buy. They'll be disappointed here. They'll look to get out break even, which they did. Strong bear bar, you can sell the close, but probably not going uh, that much lower. And also you have to wonder, you know, bulls, it was reasonable to buy this low, reasonable to buy this low, reasonable to buy this low. So, you know, if I'm a bull and I buy any of these lows here, here, or here, and I use the stop, way way down you know I don't know these bars are big but let's say he's at 30 points down something like that and I buy more lower I'm probably gonna make money so if I buy you know if I just buy arbitrarily 10 points below this low right here okay I buy here you know something like that and maybe I say, okay, I'll buy, take a measured move projection from this to here, and I'll buy 50% of the way down. So I'll buy right here at 63, and I'll use the stop somewhere down here, betting we'll at least get to here, and if not, maybe we'll go higher. And I hope this isn't confusing. So hypothetically, I'll buy right here. It basically, here's the top of the trading range, here's the bottom. So what I'm saying is, okay, if we get a bear breakout, we may not go all the way down, but we may get close. So I'll buy a halfway down the projection. So measure double top or a trading range, measure move down one times the size of the trading range. I'll buy half the distance and I'll put a stop down here. And then I'll go for twice my risk. So what that means is, Pay attention to this measure move over here. I will. Okay, so what I'll do is we'll basically say twice the risk is here. So I'm gonna buy right here, put a stop down here, and I'm gonna set a target all the way up here, which would be at least twice my initial risk. So there, it's a decent trade. If that doesn't make sense, look look at the videos, watch the videos more, and it'll it'll begin to make sense. Either way, it's a breakout follow through bar. Bulls, bears get out at least after three consecutive bull bars. A lot of bears probably would get out after above this bar, certainly above this bar. It's a low one. If you think about it, this bar would form after you get this. You'd somehow form a, you'd form a low one if this bar triggered and turned down, and a low one after a big sell climax bar is suspicious it's the best looking bar 
look to the left, best looking bar in at least the past 100, you know, 120, 180 bars, it's probably going to fail. Three consecutive bull bars, bulls will buy, stop down here, betting at least a second leg higher. Now we have a micro channel, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bar micro channel. It's a breakout, we close the gap, could be exhaustion. You have to be thinking that we're going to test up either we'll test up here or the highs up here <laughs> strong enough breakout stop down here that we'll probably get a second leg up bear not even a 50 percent pullback another strong breakout uh into the first versus down probably fail so stop down here and you can see we have a gap so you have to be thinking maybe we'll get something like this and really, this was profit taking from getting above this bar. But anyways, always in, bulls buy, no reason to get out. You can get out here betting on a, a second leg trap. However, and that's perfectly fine. When you get a breakout, when you get a second leg this strong, usually it's not a second leg trap, but you always have to be aware of it because bears will see something like this, wedge one, two, three, and hope on some and hope for some sort of reversal. But the context is good for two legs, and or 10 bars, two legs. And when you get a, a trend that's been going on for many, many days down to here, 10 bars and two legs will not be this. It's probably going to be one leg pullback, two legs on a higher time frame. So bears, bulls get out, bear, aggressive bears will sell, betting on test the moving average. First, first up will fail, and then we're starting to bottom at the moving average. Broke above this tight channel right here, sold off again. So reasonable to buy here or wait for consecutive bull bars. You can buy a stop down here, betting on retest. No decent stoppage or short. We're just, we're not getting below the moving average. Very tight channel, so first versal down will probably fail. And you can see we broke above these highs. And again, starting from a tight trading range. You know, for always in, you can certainly just get out of the long somewhere up here. When you get this many bear bars, probably best just to get out and wait. And then really at the end of the day, you snapped up. No, I probably would, no reason to do anything on this day. So I'll do one more always in real quick, and then that'll be it. So real quick for this day, when you get this many bear bars down, it's extremely strong, and you just it sometimes catch your breath for a second. Would you like this strong breakout? It sometimes looks like it can't go lower, but it can. When you get this breakout, usually it's got to go sideways for many bars. You get another breakout stop down up here. Deep pullback, but you're not getting above the moving average, and you just keep selling off. So you have to be careful and not get trapped into buying. Even though you're thinking wedge bottom, one, two, three, first, you know, expect to, you know, 10 bars, two legs. You certainly don't want to get trapped. Very high probability over here, we we're going to touch the moving average at least at a minimum. So, you know, traders will buy, you know, Sell climax, sell climax, sell climax, more of a sell climax. At some point, we've been, you know, so many bars below the moving average that bulls will be aggressively buying, betting on a retest of the moving average. And even here, you know, we're further, we're very far from the moving average. You're probably going to close the gap. So there's a lot of sense in buying over here. Anyways, let me go to this deck. This was a very low probability event. Typical when you have a big, typical when you have a sell climax kind of day, spike channel down. This is very, this is a dominant situation. You've heard I'll talk about surprise bars and dominant bars. Dominant bars last several days. Surprise bars last kind of just for the day, or at least for the next couple hours. And dominant bars usually last. Let me let me restate that. Dominant a dominant a surprise. I'll kind of categorize the surprise in two ways. You have dominant surprise bar, you have dominant bars and surprise bars. Dominant bars 
typically impact the rest of the day and sometimes can impact multiple days, like this. A surprise bar is kind of something like this. It, it's surprisingly big, so it may have a second leg up or a few legs up, but it could go sideways. This is surprisingly big that you're probably going to, you, you may have to go, you, say, you may have to go down for multiple, multiple moves. And if the context is right, it could be the start of an opposite trend, which this was. So anyways, typically when you have a consecutive sell climax day and you have a strong trend and then you have a big gap down, you typically don't have another strong trend. I think it's like Al says 25% chance you get a, another bear trend on a decently sized gap down day, which we did. So I'm gonna do it like this. Make a lead, you know. There we go. So first bar, sell climax bar, stop far away. You can sell below it, but I typically don't like to do that because I think we're gonna retest somewhere up in here and test the moving average. We're far below the moving average, so I don't know how many bears are gonna to wanna to sell. Follow through bar, probably going at least a little bit lower, but again, far from the moving average. First first slope may fail, but you gotta be careful. You may get a big bull bar closing on its high and a reversal. Doji, three consecutive bear bars, probably going at least a little bit lower. And you know, clearly we're doing that. Here, no reason to buy, very tight channel. No, you know, tight trading range, tail on top, so bad buy. Bears, bulls got trapped, and also bears. So, bears sell the clothes, disappointed, they get out, or look to get out of break even, and then they get trapped because price shoots down further. The bulls that saw this and started buying on the retest of this close are now trapped into a losing position. And you have to be thinking this could be a measuring gap. Do it like this. So first off, traders will see we have that measurement of target. We almost have that. Sometimes when you have an obvious target, open of the breakout to the close of this breakout, to the close of this bar, sometimes when you have an obvious target, you'll get really close to it and turn up. And traders will wonder if that was a sufficient test of the measure move target. So when you see this, you gotta be thinking, okay, we still may have to get closer, which we ultimately did. And then the next target traders wonder about is this high to the measuring gap. Very tight channel, obvious gap. You have to be careful about buying. All of these are minor. And we just, the, the bulls, excuse me, the bears just keep failing all the way down. And even here, three pushes down, one, two, and three. So bear breakout, another bear breakout, we have a wedge. And again, got a long ways down. So didn't quite reach the measured move of at least the middle, but we did get from the high of the bar to the low. And by the way, whenever you get a bar like this, you know, at some point, when everybody thinks the market's at least in a trading range, and what they don't know is, like right here, they believe the market's forming a trading range. They don't know where the bottom is. Is the bottom here, or is the bottom, you know, here? But what they're confident is if they buy here and buy more here, we'll get back in this range, and they can make money. So a lot of traders will buy, and they'll just buy more here or even here. Confident we'll get back to this high. And you can see, we did. You know, even the traders that bought here and waited for this trend line break and bought here, were confident we'd get back there. So always in, always in short sell for any reason. No reason to get out in really any of this. Can You can get out there, but again, it's pretty tight channel, so really no reason to get out. If you did, maybe you get short again here but it's difficult to stay short. Especially when you know the odds are you're gonna to touch the moving average. 
And really, I don't know. If I got out of if I got out here, if I sold anywhere in here, got out above this bar, I probably wouldn't get short again. Just because I'd be expecting something like this to happen in a retest above this high and above the moving average. So and then really form a trading range for the rest of the day. So I hope this video helps. Thanks for watching. Comment if you have any questions. Thanks.